Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday School time here at Mount Calvary Baptist Church. And so we're going to be studying today of how God has accomplished salvation and what God has done to provide uh, the wonderful gift of salvation for us. And so before we get into the scripture and to our lesson, let's pray. Father, will you please help me as a teacher, uh, Lord, to speak only the words you have me to speak. Help everyone who is watching and listening. God, uh, that you would uh, speak to their hearts in a special way, that you will open our eyes uh, to behold wonderful things out of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So how God has accomplished salvation. We've looked at many things so far about salvation, and uh, today we're going to see how God has uh, provided salvation, accomplished that work of salvation by substitution, how God uh, provided Jesus Christ as our substitute. And so I want to read to you a scripture out of the Old Testament. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin." For he shall bear their iniquities. That comes out of Isaiah chapter 53. And Isaiah was writing hundreds of years before Jesus would actually come and suffer for our sins. But here he's speaking of how God substituted and paid for our sins by substitution. Let's also read 1 Peter 3 verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Christ is just, we are unjust. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he, God the Father, hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Romans 5, 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Substitution is showing us how a holy and righteous God would take our sin, our sin debt, our guilt for sin, our penalty for sin, and would uh, pay for our sins in full. But then God would also give to us his righteousness and put his righteousness upon us. God's plan was that the Son of God would become man. So that the sons of men may become the sons of God. So that mankind would have a relationship with God. That he would be our father and that we would be his children. Jesus Christ, he is the only one who could make the substitution. He's the only one that could actually die in our place. There was only one being in all of creation that could be our substitute. It could not be an angel, it could not be an animal, it could not even be a plant. It had to be God. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 tells us, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. This verse is speaking of Jesus. He is the only one who is able to save us. He is the one who is able to save us completely to the uttermost. We, can't, we cannot be more saved than what he can provide. And he is alive. We are saved because of his endless life. Jesus, who is God, became man so that he could die for mankind. The wages of sin is death. In Romans chapter 6 verse 23, it tells us that. The wages of sin is death. So there must be death. 
the payment, the price for sin is debt. And so no man who is condemned in a court of law could offer the judge a plant uh, in his place. And because um, plant life and human life is very different. And um, animal life, by the way, and human life is very different as well. Uh, so in a, a court of law, uh, that wouldn't be accepted. And, uh, and so all the way back in Genesis chapter 4, when Cain was trying to offer his vegetables, his fruits of his labor to God as a sacrifice, God would not and could not accept that as an offering. No man who is condemned in a court of law to death could offer the judge a good deed. Uh, because all, all salvation by works is rejected. No man condemned in a court of law could offer an animal to die in his place. In fact, we know uh, from Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse number 4, that this is the case. We cannot, we cannot have uh, an animal offered in our place. That will not take away sins. Hebrews 10, 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. You say, well, why did they have animal sacrifices? They were, they were all pictures. They were pictures of the coming sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so it was not the sacrifice of that animal that saved anyone in the Old Testament. It was faith, faith in God, that truly God would provide himself as that sacrifice. And so good deeds, animals, plants are unacceptable. And uh, so it is only the death of man that could satisfy, um, that could satisfy the requirement of death, the, the payment for price of sin. And so Jesus Christ, he is uh, a man. He was and is a man. Now, let me make it clear that Jesus, uh, he was from the very beginning uh, of creation, he was and is the Son of God, but in eternity past, Jesus is God. But there is a specific time uh, in history that God became man. We call that the incarnation. The incarnation when uh, God became flesh. And so uh, Jesus, he was innocent. He was a man, but he was innocent and he could die for the guilty. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18, it says, For in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. He's able to help those who are tempted. Why? Because he went through uh, uh, temptation in all points, like as we are, yet without sin. In Hebrews 4, 15, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points uh, tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. And so Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. No man condemned to death could offer uh, the payment of another condemned man to be his substitute because that man who was condemned uh, and the other man who was condemned, they're, they're both guilty. They're both condemned. And so whether they die for themselves or another, uh, they uh, themselves could only die for their sins. And then a savior had to be without sin. A savior had to be innocent and uh, could not have died for his own sin. And uh, another thing is that there is no man, uh, no human that has no sin. Uh, who can say, uh, I have sin or I'm, I am clean from sin? I'm not, not one. Uh, Romans 3.10, there's none righteous. No, not one. Okay, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all of mankind is sinful except for Jesus Christ. And uh, we, we see that through the virgin birth. Jesus, uh, he was not born of sinful flesh, though he was born of flesh. He was born uh, just as we are, but he was conceived uh, without sin, conceived of the Holy Ghost. And so the sinless Son of God became the sinless Son of Man, that he might die as our substitute. And Jesus paid the full penalty and price for sin. Now, uh, a, sin, a substitute must be innocent and perfect without sin. But to die for the whole world, for a man to die for the whole world, uh, 
one man could only die for one man. And uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. And so Jesus Christ, he came uh, to be our perfect sacrifice for sin. And he's the only one who could die for the sins of every man. Why? Because Jesus, he is infinite. Jesus is infinite God. Even if there had been a man, one man without sin who had never done anything wrong, and I, uh, you know, maybe you could think of the best person in the world that, that you could possibly think of. And, and perhaps, as, as just as it says in Romans chapter 5, for a good man, some would even dare to die. That man could only die for another man. Okay? So it would take an infinite, uh, eternal God to die for the sins, the infinite sins of all mankind. The effects of sin are eternal. That's why uh, the scripture tells us that the payment for sins uh, as death and hell is eternity. Uh, if you go to hell, it's not for uh, you know just a specific uh, number of years for how much you've sinned. It's for all of eternity. Why? Because uh, the payment for sins is an eternal payment. No angel could pay this price or no angel could be a savior, savior for mankind, even uh, if angels are sinless and angels are also uh, uh, finite. Okay, so an angel could not be that fitting substitute. Only the sinless, infinite son of God could pay the infinite price for our sins. It, and Jesus is the only savior that there could ever be. In Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, verse number 37, Jesus knew that, that what he had come into this world to do. He says he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus, at this time, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and uh, he was in such great sorrow. It says in another uh, of the Gospels that his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood. Jesus was in agony, and he was saying, let this cup pass from me. Why? Because Jesus was looking forward to the cup. Uh, that uh, he would partake in that his father had for him, and that was to go to the cross. And at John 18, 11, G then said Jesus unto Peter, who uh, took his sword to defend Jesus from the Roman soldiers, to defend Jesus from uh, those who would arrest him, and it ended up cutting off the ear of the, uh, the high priest servant. But Jesus said, put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall not I drink it? Shall I not drink it? And so Jesus, he knew why he was to uh, come into this world. John 18, 37, he says to Pilate, to this end was I born, and for this cause I came I into the world. Jesus came into the world. Why? For that very hour, to go to the cross, to suffer for our sins. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And so Jesus, he knew why he had come into the world. Jesus, he was the only fitting substitute. But Jesus was also a willing substitute. Thank God for that. Jesus was willing to die for us. To take our place upon the cross. Jesus was willing to die in our place. Philippians 2 verse 8 says, In being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. In Philippians chapter 2, it speaks of the divine emptying of, of Christ. He emptied himself. He did not uh, lay aside uh, his deity. He did not stop being God. But Jesus humbled himself and became a man. And when Jesus died on the cross, God died. 
it's just an amazing thought that the infinite God, uh, the God who is all powerful, who created all things, uh, who created the world and everything that's in it, how he could actually die, but he did so. He, he became obedient unto death, the death of the cross. And uh, here in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 5, it tells us, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. Jesus, he provided himself as a ransom for all, willingly to be our substitute. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is uh, long-suffering to us who not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That was his motive uh, in being our substitute so that uh, men, uh, mankind, would repent and trust him as their savior. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7 and 10, this is an, this is an Old Testament passage being re repeated here. And Jesus says, Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me, that is in the Psalms, to do thy will, O God. Jesus came to do God's will, and that, it, that was to be our substitute. In verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. God's will is to sanctify us through the offering that Jesus Christ made, the offering of his body once for all. And so we see this substitution uh, was from a sinless, infinite, willing uh, sacrifice, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. In second, for, I'm sorry, it's First Timothy two verse three and four says, "For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior." You know what? The sacrifice of Jesus Christ was good and acceptable in the sight of God. God accepted Jesus' sacrifice. God accepted his blood. And uh, it, it is the only sacrifice that God will accept. It goes on to say in verse 4, Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? God's plan, God's desire is for all mankind to be saved. And the only way is through the substitute, uh, substitutionary uh, death of Jesus Christ. God shows us uh, through his word many pictures, and we looked at some of those uh, earlier, but one is about a, a lamb, a lamb and how a lamb would take our place. But did you know God's uh, substitute in the New Testament would uh, be very different from that of the Old? In the Old Testament, a, a, a lamb, an animal lamb, would take the, the place of a man. Uh, but in the New Testament, the shepherd would die for the sheep. In John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. God's way has always been for he himself to be our substitute. What a wonderful thing that God would provide uh, not only the, the way of salvation, but he would provide himself. The ultimate sacrifice himself to be uh, the substitute for us. This is the, uh, the vital uh, doctrine about salvation. All the other wonderful things that we find about what God does through salvation, what God provides for us in salvation would not be made possible unless Jesus had gone to the cross, unless Jesus had been born. Let's start off there. Had been born uh, of a virgin, uh, a sinless birth, uh, that Jesus Christ, he would live a sinless life and that Jesus would die for us. He would be uh, made sin for us. All the, under, uh, all the other wonderful things that we receive through salvation would not be possible unless Jesus Christ was our substitute. And we would have no hope of salvation. We have no hope of eternal life unless Jesus Christ had been our substitute. And, and so all of this can be summed up in a very small phrase, and that is, he died for me. Christ died for us. Jesus died for you. Friend who's watching, God 
died for you. God loves you so much. God loves you that much that he paid the price. It's foolishness to think that we could add anything else to what God has already provided. It's foolishness to think that our works or uh, an, an offering that we can make and something that we could give could ever uh, equal the sacrifice that God has made. Friend, I want to invite you uh, to put your, your pride, your, uh, uh, your efforts uh, aside and to trust the substitute that God has provided for salvation. Jesus Christ, he can be your Savior. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. Friend, if you've never done that, if Jesus Christ is not living in your heart, you can do that today.